Okay, let me share my screen. Uh, I hope there's no echo uh, from the other side. Yes, I got echo. You just uh, text again inside the comment box. Then we try to sort out the technical issue within the group itself. Okay, I'll share my screen now. Okay, let me start. Okay, good afternoon again. Once uh, for joining us, uh, this is still colleague webinar. Uh, today actually is the 30th series of the whole still colleague webinar. Series started a few years ago. Uh, I'm actually uh, uh, grateful that uh, this time around is my turn to give some sharing to the floor. And of course, this will be my today one hour so called content sharing. First, I'll talk about what type of uh, weathering impact that could still actually could happen. Second section will be more about the case study, and this is also one of my favorite uh, so called topic that I want to share back to the floor about what we have been experienced throughout the many years that we actually went to the site for visit. Third, of course, uh, is a summary of the topic number one and two uh, uh, in terms of how to reselect the record of steel to fit your applications. Then, followed by the last section is the DNA. And first of all, session number one is that what is the very impact of quota steel in this topic itself? I'll be sharing about introduction of quota steel, then followed by what kind of uh, so called uh, issue that normally we face if you want to use quota steel in your roofing and working applications. First, of course, a lot of people always ask me, Jack, hmm, your steel is very thin. May I know how it's being produced inside your line? Of course, our line is actually in Kappa plant. And for us to produce a quota steel itself, first of all, we do have an uh, incoming feed coil, which actually uncoated. Of course, the lemon term, term them as a coral coil, that normally you will see some of this coil being carried by the lorry, right? This coil itself is without any coating or garrison treatment being conducted. Means, means what? Means that if let's say this material is exposed to the oxygen or the ring, it will actually rust very, very fast. That's why we need a garrison treatment to treat it so that to reduce the corrosion activity happen on the steel surface. And this is what we do in the side the line. We need to apply a layer of calcium treatment. In, the, in this case, we are using the aluminum technology, both aluminum and zinc, to coat on both the top and bottom surface of the strips. After that, came up as a metallic coated steel. So, lemon term call this as a bare finished product. And what if some client, architect, consultant, they want to you know select certain color for their coated steel? Of course. We can bring this fit coil uh, to the paint line to do the coil printing process. This is how it looks like. Okay, we use the roller to apply a cooperative paint system inside the line so that the paint can paint over the strip surface. Eventually, become a color coated steel. And then what we do, we actually work with our key customer, the roll former, who are actually the end product manufacturer. In this example, I choose the roofing sheet roll former machine. From here, you can see that the sheet actually will go through a series of roof forming process to form into whatever shape profile that you selected earlier on. And then our key customer, the roof former, will actually supply back this roofing sheet back to your project, followed by the installation done by the installer. So this is how the whole relation works from a raw product without any coating, become coated, eventually become pre painted, then roll form, and then supply to the site for installation. Of course, this is actually a simple image just to show to you a very basic cut steel. The left side here means bare finishing without any paint layer except for the garnishing layer. On the right side is the color cut steel. You can see that this is actually a green color cut steel coil. For us to produce cut steel coil itself, we can actually do a lot of finishing. As you can see in the slide, we can do the classic finish. We also can do some metallic finishing, low vaspin system to have a matte finishes. And also maybe perhaps some texture and so even with green. So inside, I'm going to share with you the images. Number one actually is the bare finish. Uh, let's say example in this case is a single steel coil that being roll form into those uh, roofing and also the wall cladding. Upon installation, this side looks like uh, at the house itself. Next image actually is a color coated steel coil 
we actually choosing now here actually is a those typical solid color finish. Just like car body, you will actually observe a solid color and metallic color. In this case, it's a solid color finish. Of course, first time I mentioned car body, right? Similar to metal roofing. Now this slide is showing you the metallic coated finish, the metallic finish. Yeah, whereby you can see that different sun angle direction will actually give you a different reflection. This is what we term them as a metallic finish steel. Then next one actually is a low cost paint system that we developed uh, in 2014. Uh, in whereby, you know, this is actually using a low cost paint system technology to actually reduce the problem glare away. And this sort of a matte finish is very really usable if you have any high rises uh, surrounding building uh, for your project. Why? Because it can re reduce and diffuse away all the glare uh, from the surrounding environment. Yeah. Next, of course, is the texture finish. Uh, we also developed this uh, many, many years ago because uh, some comment given to us that can your coated steel looks like similar to a tile finish. Yeah, that's why this type of uh, material also designed such a way that the surface is a bit rough to simulate something similar to the concrete tile appearances. Last but not least, also some looking finishes. This is also something that is have been uh, produced by us uh, many, many years ago. And this actually to cater for certain uh, needs whereby some designer, they want to have the kind of a wood grain uh, so finishing on their surfaces. So we also could produce all this kind of a wood grain finish inside our line. Okay, so far I already share to all of you about what could the steel could do, right? In terms of give you a bare finishing, give you a various type of uh, so-called color coated finishing. And always this is a question that asked to me. Is all the coated steel actually behave, perform the similar manner? My answer of is actually no. Why? Because from this session view of the coated steel itself, you can see that this steel actually comprises of multi-layer. We have a different coating layer, we have a different organic coating or the paint layer as well. So all this function itself actually will different from one manufacturer to one manufacturer. And what would be the typical failure mode that we observe? Oh, normally in terms of a failure mode itself, the first common failure mode that would be the corrosion attack. Because steel is still a steel, eventually you will still get a corrosion attack uh, because of weathering. This is actually very normal in our climax. The role for us as an R&D uh, so-called uh, staff is that what to us we need to put inside the steel to ensure that we delay the whole corrosion reduction activity. From this slide itself, you can see that image on the left side is our product. Image on the right side is a computer product. Why I share these images? Because of complaint. <laughs> Why? Because this project actually was supplied using more than two suppliers. One is Busco, and another one is a non Busco material. We actually call up to do the investigation. How come my roof, my metal roof actually get corrosion only after five years in use? For our information, this location are actually located in a benign condition, far away from a seaside, far from the industrial park. By right, the first five years shouldn't have picked up for a premature failure. Nevertheless, it's happened. So what we need to do? We need to actually go back to the uh, site to do investigation. Eventually, we found that the right side of the material that you corroded is not physical material. On the left side, is ours is still in good condition. Next, of course, is the paint durability. Why I say paint durability is because we do observe some good steel upon uh, install. After a few years uh, 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 weathering, some of the paint actually faded badly. As example, in this case, you can see that this is actually very distinctive differences. This is a color that not been faded badly. This actually has been faded badly. Also, some part of the roofing sheet itself, you can see the paint start to peel off from the surfaces. So all these things actually could happen. If, let's say they don't have a good formulation being used, don't have a good know-how, how to put the product inside their line. So this actually could happen. Next, of course, this actually fresh from our own. Uh, this actually was taken a week ago, uh, exactly a week ago by my colleague who had been, had been called to the site. Why? Because the developer actually used a drone to do a bird eye view shooting. At the end, they found that how can my housing development project got so many different colors. So uh, we actually uh, being called up by our customer to go to the site visit together. And then eventually, as usual, we will disbanded the metal roofing sheets and start to do the investigations. Upon checking, we found that just yes, this our material still looks okay. On the left side here is a non boost code material. Why non boost code material? Just for information, for all the steel that we produce in Kappa plant, we need to actually print our product marking uh, on our sheets. 
This means what? Means that upon flip over the routine sheets, we can file or identify our product marking. Those products without product, our, mark, our product marking means that it's non boost material, as similar as that. This actually is what we term them as a premature color fading. From here, you can see that all these are so called uh, safety shoe signage, right? This means what? Means that powdering is already happened on the roofing sheets. Why powder happened? Because the paint is already chalked badly. Yeah, this actually, you can see that this is siding of the roofing sheets. This is actually after weathering, only less than two years. You can see that before and after weathering. These are product before and after weathering. So you can see the color change is very minimal compared to this one. Uh, that's why I say that Kota Steel itself have a lot of know-how, how to formulate it, and how to produce it. That's why, in short, not all Kota Steel are created equal. We need to follow these three uh, guidance principles uh, for any quarter. First itself, we need to select what is the right raw material for us to actually produce inside the line, to use inside the line. This is actually very critical. Second is that, how can we actually produce those coins inside our line using the best manufacturing equipment or facilities? Followed by the third pillar itself is how good is your QC core control? Yeah, with all these three major pillars uh, inside the manufacturing line, we able to actually provide a possible and durable good steel for you to use. First of all, let me share some inside story. Yeah, uh, is how we select the raw material for us to produce our good steel. From here, you can see that why I select here base steel substrate. For paper steel itself, this is the number one layer that will be used by us to produce our cutter steel. In the market itself, there are two types of uh, cutter steel substrate that you can actually select or use. Here, I show to you. On the left side, is what I term them as a type AZ coating, uh, coating substrate, whereby you are using the aluminum and zinc compositions. Whereas on the right side here is Majority is all the zinc component or, or zinc coated, or let me term, term them as a garnet coated steel. So you can choose either using the type AZ or the type Z for you to use your substrate. Yeah. For us in Booscope, we actually go through a lot of series of R&D and development. We found that the type AZ is still the best product compared to the type Z. Why is it happened in such a way? This is actually a simple diagram to show to you that upon weathering, what will happen? You can see that this is a zinc layer which is still intact before weathering. Upon weathering, this will become like this. The zinc outer layer actually will be consumed off. Until a certain extent, the base steel will be exposed to the atmosphere. Once the base steel is exposed, this means that the base steel will start to corrode. Whereas for type AZ technology itself, we can see that this before weathering and after weathering. After weathering itself, you still can notice some presence of the zinc alloy. And majority present of the aluminum alloy inside the cutter steel itself. With this combination of aluminum alloy and zinc alloy, where it's still left over, it can actually prolong the crochet attack. And this to show to you that after 20 years, this is what it looks like. Single steel technology itself, without showing some red stain, compared to a GI cutter steel technology, whereby it already shows a series of rusting happen already. Rusting means what? Means the base steel is exposed. Of course, uh, in terms of corrosion attack itself, corrosion protection, there are two things normally I recommend you to look for. First, of course, ask yourself, what is the metal coating type that currently are using? Okay, how to check is very simple. Just ask them, is it a type AZ or type Z? Type Z means GI or garnet coated steel. Type AZ means aluminum coated steel. On the bottom left side here, you can see that this is actually our single steel sample. After 18 months of uh, exposure inside, the marine environment, no sign of corrosion activity or resting actually being observed. As compared to this GI material, we actually was using a very high grade. High grade means very thick GI layer. You can see that it's actually about 600 gram. Oh, yeah. Compared to this aluminum, it's only about 150 gram per square. Yeah. So even though this is actually much more thicker than this sample, but yet this sample doesn't corrode, but this sample was corroded. This is due to what? Due to the coating type itself. That's why I mentioned. Once the zinc alloy layer worn off in the GI material, the base steel will be exposed to the oxygen. Once the base is exposed to oxygen, corrosion activity will start to take place immediately. Well, for single steel technology itself, zinc layer will actually worn off eventually, but what left over on the coated steel surface is aluminum alloy. 
this alum alumni lawyer can form a layout acceleration to delay the whole coaching activity because it's a last much more longer. Second thing you need to consider, of course, is a good thing mass. How many gram per meter square? Yeah. Now I share with you is that what if I use that similar technology, just say single steel technology, the other using. From our study itself, we can see that if you are using the ASAPT coating class over here or coating mass over here, what if some of you want to save cost, they will reduce the coating class or coating mass, right? From 50 gram per square, what if I reduce to maybe 100 gram? From here to here, you can see that the last band itself will drop 50% already. Yeah, that's why from this uh, corrosion activity sample, you can see that this sample after similar testing hours, no failure happened. But this sample is already failed, start to get closure like that. Why? Because lower coating mass. That's why just be careful. Uh, when you want to spec in anything, make sure you know that what is your coating mass that actually you spec in inside your project. High coating mass means longer lasting, lesser closure activity will happen. Of course, besides the coated steel substrate, what are the other things that we can protect the steel from corrosion? Of course, it's a pin system. Pin system is very really critical. Why? Because if you choose the wrong pin system, Pressure failure also could happen, even though it's painted with a layer of uh, paint. Why? Next, I'll show to you. Example, you can see that I, I'm going to show to you that sample on the left side is SLT substrate and using the superlaser pin system by blue scope. Sample on the right side using similar SLT substrate, but using the different pin system from blue scope. Upon going through the series of corrosion tests, you can see the sample have a heavy corrosion attack on all the cut edges. Yeah, you can see, it, to a certain extent, some already started to turn into wrestling corrosion attack already. Compared to our sample, it still looks good. What if someone are, uh, 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 being asked to do cost saving? Cost saving means what? Ah, I can use uh, boost code polycipin system. What if I want to cut down the coating mass, for example? This will be an impact. Once you reduce the coating mass, right, in the substrate itself, the corrosion protection activity uh, will not be so good anymore. You can see that it's actually even worse than this image, right? This one fifty, yeah. If I move lower to hundred, you can see it's already bad already. More corrosion attack. That's why it's important for you to understand that both combinations, the coating mass, coating type, and pen system, all these three play an important role uh, for us to prevent any premature corrosion failure. Next, I want to talk about the color durability. Yeah, just now it's about corrosion. How about color? Because color to me also one of the key important criteria for us to select a right coated steel. Uh, of course, for us, we need to select, carefully select the right ingredients, example, type of resin, type of pigment, or color that we need to paint inside the line. This is a simple uh, chart. Later, I'll go into more detail to share with you uh, each of these uh, so called paint system. Uh, for us to measure how fast or how bad is the color faded, we actually use the terms called delta E measurement. Yeah, this is a symbol, delta E, yeah. So this delta E is actually quite simple to understand. How the number means more color change actually happened. You can see that on top of here is those number that's not being exposed uh, uh, on the weathering. Upon weathering, this is what it's going to get, right? Before and after weathering. Before and after weathering. Before and after weathering. From here, you can see that all the data in number. Lower number means lesser color change being observed compared to the high number. As somebody is better E20, uh, 21 units. Yeah. So that's why for us, when we develop the pin formulation itself, we need to ensure that we carefully select the ingredients in order for us to ensure that after we're doing it itself, the data e can remain as low as possible. Next slide is to show to you that this is what we actually develop. From here, you can see that those two lines on the top here means high the body, right? After 50 over or close to 60 months of exposure, compared to our pin formulation used uh, by us, you can see our body actually quite low, only about two units. As compared to the other pin system in the market, the body actually go up to over 12 units already after five years exposures. And then this will be the visual slide. You can see that before, before exposure, after exposure, and this is the sample, before exposure and after exposure. So from here, you can see that, you know, if the wrong pain formulation was being selected and choose to produce in a line, this would actually potentially happen, whereby you may get a premature color fading. 
Next, come to the second pillar, just like I mentioned, the best equipment and best facilities inside the line. For us, we're actually using the technology from Australia, and then we use the technology actually to enhance the local know-how to produce our water steel. Of course, everyone can so-called copy uh, the same ratio of what we produce inside our line. But to forget one thing is that how good is the mouth structure that being formed inside the water steel itself? This image I want to show to you is that two sample, similarly similar coating class, is that 150? This also is 150. Upon doing the mouth structure testing itself, what we can observe is that this actually is a good mouth structure. The aluminum alloy layer, the zinc alloy layer actually sit in the right position. We have to this one. Those alloy layers actually sit in the wrong positions. Because of this, this are product once sold to the market itself, we know that they are going to have a premature corrosion attack as opposed to this sample. That's why for us, we will do the testing to ensure that whatever we produce inside the line are within our requirement. And last part of the pillar itself is the final touches means QC checking. How good is the uh, ground paper operator do the QC check? This is a very simple classic example to show to you. How even is the coating layer? You can see the top layer, thicknesses, and the bottom layer actually quite even. Okay. Compared to this sample, you can see that top layer is very really thick, bottom layer is very really thin. This opera actually could actually go to the project site if you didn't ask them to do the thorough checking. For us, we cannot escape or skip all this type of testing. Most of the line inside the manufacturing line itself, some people will only check, test only the top surface. We're not taking care about bottom surface. But for Busco, each layer itself is meaning something important for us to check. From here, you can see that if even, most likely the product will perform evenly. If uneven, you will expect some premature failure. Certain area may actually last longer. Certain area actually may actually uh, correct faster than the other. Also, come to the pink steel itself. Pink is also one of the important key factors. Inside the catalog itself, you will see some manufacturer will actually self-declare. How many micron I quote over my pink thicknesses? As some in this case, color steel inside our catalog, we declare 25 micron total top coat. Upon checking, this is within the spec. Some people, they also don't copy our formulation of 25 microns. They also produce it, came inside the catalog. But upon do a QC check, you can see that this is what they produce. Only about 16 microns the most. This is actually way, way below the requirement of the standard itself. For us, if we do come across this hard product, the spec doesn't meet our minimum requirement, we consider as QC reject. So with all this kind of control, then we could actually avoid a wrong product go to the market. Example, in this case, on the top surface over here, both are top and bottom surface. You can see performance are quite uh, even. This one you can see that even though it's a equal thin class material, performance is not so even. This surface has a lesser corrosion compared to this surface. Why? Because the mouse structure is not in good condition. The coating layer is not evenly coated. That's why you can see uh, this half of a premature failure uh, on this particular samples. Come to the pain performances as well. Next, you can see that this is actually exposed uh, in the south of Kappa plant, uh, the sample. After 10 years old, our product still looks good, no sub corrosion attack, as compared to the competitor product inside the market. After only 10 years old, the first failure sign, of course, is the color is already faded, gone already, no more blue finish. Then the second failure, of course, is the cut just corrosion attack already. But if some sample was exposed close to 20 over years, like this one, you can see that this PBGI material is already badly corroded and affected. As compared to our sample, also 20 years exposure, no sign of corrosion attack. The color is still uh, remain uh, not impacted at all. That's why I say that without a good QC control, things can actually uh, so called go south uh, inside our project site. Next, session number two is a case study, and this is my favorite topic. In here, I like out for all of you five case study. How I like out for you is that first, I will share those uh, case study within the benign condition. Benign condition means what? Means far away from a seaside, far away from the industry park. Uh, means that the corrosion rate is actually quite slow. Then followed by marine conditions. Yeah. So this is how I'm going to share to you. First, of course, this is one of my uh, favorite case study uh, because it's actually downtown Kuching area. Uh, for people from Kuching or Sarawak, they know this area. Where I show this image, they know already the location. This is actually a project whereby they supply using more than one suppliers. All the curve roof. Here are using our carbon steel as compared to the street roof over here is faster. It's using a uh, nabusco material or other suppliers. This shade color was actually green in color, but after 10 years old, you can see that all the green color shade 
have been actually gone already. From green, become beige alike. Some area actually have the start of project attack. Well, you can see project attack happened already. And then we went back again to this project location in year number 15. The closure activity actually getting worse. You can see, this actually is already very crowded. This means what? Means the whole base still is already gone already, already exposed to the oxygen. That's why closure attack could be so serious. Where else color still on the curved roof? It still remain intact. No side closure attack. Color is still even without uneven color fading. And if it is up close, you can see the images of the commodity sample is already badly processed. And then uh, our customer actually went back again to the virtual location, take a drone shooting, and then they shared this image to me a few months ago. You can see that this is our color bound roof, the roof is still okay. After 23 years old, no problem. Whereas the commodity sample over here, most of the roof was already badly rusted already. Even though they do some repairing, how to do repairing, they actually all painted, but this also couldn't help. Those areas that all painted now also become rusted. You can see this one, it also become rusted already. Okay, this idea number two is that uh, also in the benign conditions, about 1.7 kilometer away from the marine exposure, please I will say that one of the oldest Calabon uh, roofing sheet have been uh, visited before. Uh, I went to the site a uh, few years ago in year 2022. Uh, why? Because uh, this uh, actually this hardware unit is one of our customer actually. So he actually shared with us that his roof actually was Calabon steel. Have been there since the 18, uh, 1982. So it's actually about 40 years old uh, when I go back and then inspect the roof itself. After 40 over years, you can see that the carbon steel roof is still intact. No, no, no sign of corrosion attack as compared to the neighbor uh, so called roofing sheets. You can see the neighbor roofing over here is already badly corroded. Neighbor here also badly corroded. Yeah, that's why I say that the alumzing technology, the single steel technology plus the wrapping system could actually prolong the whole lifespan of the materials. Third key study, this one uh, also in benign conditions uh, near the KIA area is a hangar for Airbus uh, A380 aircraft. This hangar project at the time, they actually give us a requirement that they want something that is very durable in terms of the color performances. So in terms of color performances, the most durable thing system would be the QEDF thing system. Of course, our product name is called Colorable SPD. Uh, you can see this QEDF formulation. The support itself is very long lasting against color fading. After press all, we went back again to the site to conduct some case study to check the roofing sheet performances. You can see that after 12 years old, this is the main roof. Color is still evenly, evenly faded, not so much of fading actually. Compared to the sample, because normally when we do this observation, we will bring a control sample, means an unexpected sample, to place a pawn to the weathered sample. Then this one. After 12 years old, you can see that, ah, our sample and the other so is still quite okay. okay. Not much color change actually observed. How about the wall heading? Same thing. We also do the same uh, so called comparison. Uh, sample and the other trials old sample. You can see that everything looks alike. So uh, uh, that's why we concluded that you know, three day print system is the most deliberate print system if you want to have something that is more long lasting in terms of color performances. Of course, uh, inside the project area compound, we also have noticed another adjacent building next door only, whereby this building was actually installed much more longer, uh, 22 years old. Unfortunately, we already have some premature failure already. Upon checking, we confirmed that this is not our material, but supplied by others. But most likely from these appearances, it would be maybe using the GI or the zinc substrate. Because as I mentioned before, once the zinc layer went off already, the base will be exposed. Once the base will be exposed, caution attack, will start to happen already. Study number four. Uh, this one actually is the marine condition. Uh, how close or how near to the marine? It's only about 260 from the big surf. Okay, this is a coastal line. And then using the Google uh, uh, map to do the measurement, you can see the nurse is about 260 meters away. Uh, we went back again to this school project where we actually supply using our Columbus Ultra Steel. Ultra Steel means AZ-200 material, uh, higher coating mass, or higher coding class. With this sort of material itself, it's a right selection uh, because it's very near to the seaside. And then this will be the appearances after 15 years. You can see the whole main roof, nothing happened on the main roof itself. Everything still is okay. No sound pushing attack. Color also uh, evenly faded. Yeah. 
And of course, we also do some close-up monitoring. What we see is that the flashing capping still okay. Kai just still okay. Yeah, everything's still okay, except for some fastener. Some fastener is already very corroded. Yeah. And this side itself, to me personally, I will also observe some corrosion attack on the non boost commentary. Yeah? Example, some uh, air conducting, air con casing, ventilator fans, uh, the lighting, uh, uh, so called steel, everything actually was badly corroded. Yeah, this actually means what? Means for the site location itself is one of the harsh environment uh, at the area. And then we also notice uh, non boost material. Uh, why non boost material is very simple because they have the brand index. This brand index not belong to the That's why when we see this one, okay, confirm it's not boost material. So from here, as I mentioned before, any good steel who want to fail itself, they started to fail from cut edges. You can see that this is a major failure of the, of the material itself. Or the cut edges itself already badly corroded. Yeah, it's the first sign of corrosion attack. Yeah. Eventually, the corrosion will spread off to the surface of the material itself. And of course, some of the learning also from this uh, project site is a fastener, as I mentioned already. Some fastener, what we see is that still okay. Some fastener are not okay. As somebody this one is okay. This one is only very rusted. For wood scope, we do recommend a consultant to use class 4 fastener if the project site is less than 400 meters from the marine influences. Yeah, this is actually our recommended process. Why? Because fastener itself, if you don't use a class 4 that near the seaside, you will potentially get this out of a temperature push attack on your fasteners. Of course, copper tape, uh, the similar metal effect, this is also something that is quite common uh, observed, and this is something that we should avoid it, uh, to use it. That's so why you see that, that those areas that are using copper tape, after a few years, is already attacking the surface itself already. So you can see that this is actually projected due to the copper tape uh, directly from that over here. Uh, some area actually they are fastening using aluminum reel. But aluminum material actually is a compatible material to our uh, coated steel. That's why you won't see any pollution attack on the fashion itself. Uh, last case item number five. This one actually uh, is a house. Uh, house owner actually means uh, name uh, Mr. John. Uh, uh, we actually spoken to him, interview him to get some uh, insight. Upon interviewing him, he actually shared with us that he is very proud of his house. Why? Because his roof is still intact after so many years. Yeah, because after 22 years old, he never replaced his roof as compared to his neighbor uh, roof. This is his neighbor roof. Right? It's already very corroded. And this is me over here outside in the photo. Yeah. So from here itself, you can see that his house is actually located very near to the coaster, less than uh, 25 meters. You can see very, very near. Yeah. This is actually the, 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 the sea already. And then this is neighbor house. He told me that, Jack, make sure you take a drone shot. Uh. Neighbor house is very, very corroded. Yeah. And from here, you can see that this is the front view of the house itself. Everything's still intact. Nothing happened. Yeah, this is a side view. Also, same thing, nothing happened. The whole roof, column, all across, still, still performing uh, without any problem. Uh, we do observe uh, other steel components, in this case, Senna steel. So, Senna steel itself, using a type of environment, is the right choice. But make sure you use the right Senna steel grade. I think this is important. Normally, for a good Senna steel that used near the marine, should be the 316. Great, yeah. This one we doesn't know what kind of weight they are using. Perhaps maybe three o four or maybe two hundred series. You use uh, those uh, lower tier uh, stainless steel grade, you would get this kind of uh, premature T staining corrosion like this one. Yeah, T staining corrosion will happen easily. Uh, this I share already. Our uh, carbon ultra steel after so many years still intact, no problem. But you use a wrong selection of stainless steel, for example, you can get premature T staining corrosion happen already. Okay, the session. How to select the material? Okay, now this sound to you is that the four criteria or four conditions. First one, know your environment. Where are they located? This to me is the most important because if your environment is far away from the seaside, example, when that condition means that something that I can or even maybe one came away, you see, what I say when that condition will be one came away. Based on our study, anything less than one came away, the corrosion rate will be very high already. Yes. I, this is a couple of that less than one kilometer ocean activity is the most serious one. Besides, for us, we need to be careful if the project site is located near the marine or less than one kilometer from the ocean activity. Any more than that, the distance itself is still a quite safe distance for you to use the project still without any problem. 
And just like I mentioned already earlier on, but now it's up again. For us, important to understand what kind of putter steel you are using. Coating type, whether it's a type Z or type Z, and the coating mass, how many grams per meter square. Now I show to you first, this sample is actually a GI sample using Z275 coating class or coating mass. What if I want to save cost? I reduce from 275 gram become 180 gram. The project will be much more faster. Oh, this is given already because lesser coating or, or thinner coating. And then what if I change my coating type from a type Z to a type AZ means a single technology. Definitely, this type of technology is I show to you already. Single technology got the two type of metal inside there. You have the aluminum, you have the zinc alloy inside there. So with this type of protection, you won't corrode so fast. That's why you can see that even though single steel sample over here is only 150 gram, lesser than here, but because of type Z technology is also superior compared to the type Z. That's why you will not get any commercial corrosion failure on this sample. Next is the pin system. So pin system now I want to share in more detail level. From here you can see that every product have their point and cons. Three different system itself would be the best uh, to provide you the best color performances. But they are not the best in terms of color protection uh, compared to the poison pin system. Yeah. So for us, we need to carefully select what are the right pin system for us to choose or use for particular coated steel itself. And then for us, we also quite proud uh, of the pin formulation currently using by us. Uh, this paint system has been developed recently, uh, only four years ago, uh, by our army department. You can see that our color bond, uh, uh, our Busco pre developing system, okay, this sample itself, after waiting for 54 months, the color change or color fade is very, very minimum. This before, this after. The dye is only about 1.8 unit. And then this is our uh, uh, product or sample using our super paint system. You can see that this product even can outperform the generic uh, PDF in the market. Normally, for any architect or any consultant, when they learn about PDF, they thought that it's really the product or uh, metric against color change or color fading. This statement actually over is, is, is true, but for us uh, in Busco, we also try to actually develop our policy system to be on par, if not better than the PDF in the market. So, from these images, you can see that our product performances, even the product can actually also outperform the common uh, generate pre-ADF in the market. What was is that? The SMB system here. This one actually considered as one of the premium grade in the market, but yet it will still actually fade up much more faster than post uh, so-called formulation. Then this is what happened. Uh, this is actually a real case study, Travis O only, our sample, Calabas Steel. This is commodity sample uh, in the similar locations. Their product is already feathered badly or even fading. Some part is getting a uh, project already called as made our sample over here. Nothing happened, still everything still intact after terrorist exposure. Of course, the point number four for you to select materials based on what you required. Earlier on, I shared already to all of you. Go to steel yourself, we can do it in the bare finishing, uh, the raw finishing. We also can do it in the solid finish color. We also can do it in the metallic finish color and low cost pin system for by texture finish. It's all depends on what you really need. So he actually was, will, will also influence the outcome of your selection. And then this will be a very simple summary uh, of the selection based on performance perspective. What are performances? Two type performances. The Y bar over here is to actually talk about color performances. The X bar over here or X axis over here is talking about the corrosion resistant performances. This is our typical uh, proposal. Normally, uh, color steel have a longer lifespan compared to single steel. That's why it's slightly longer lifespan against the corrosion system compared to single steel. What if I want to design maybe an airport project and my requirement is to have a very long lasting color performances because I don't want to pay a money to do my old painting after 20 years old. So what kind of material they use for that? Of course, pre-day photo steel, which is our color SPD. You can see pre-day over here, more color durability. What if my project site is near the coastal area and then I'm building a warehouses, I want it to last very long, of course, what you can do, you can select a higher coating class, which is the AZ200, our color of steel, using polyester pin system. But as I mentioned already, uh, a pre pin system is good against color retention, but not good against corrosion attack. That's why a lot of people ask me, Jack, do you have something to offer over here? Here. Why? Because we come across a lot of our competitor offering AZ200 with PDF. To me, this is our product, AZ200 with PDF. I will offer to you if your project location are within the benign condition, means far away from a seaside, 
far away from the industry area. Why? Because once you use our combinations, et cetera, under with PDF, you know, seaside, you know, industrial area, you will still get racial corrosion failure. Uh, this is what we observe. Okay. This is actual case study. You can see that we do a very simple lab simulation. Classic system to provide better case protection for the seal. Like compared to the pre-dating system. This is a pre-dating system. After similar exposure duration, you can see what cut edge is already badly corroded already. That's why uh, pre-dating system is not what we recommended to you if you want to use this product near the corrosive environment. Uh, this is also all the sharing that shared by us from Australia. Australia's time, they used to use pre-dating system for marine condition. Since uh, the cut of a failure mode have happened already, they actually stopped. No more pre-dating steel that used near the seaside. This one is only after 2.5 years old. What if they change the substrate from the AZ type to the type Z over here? You can see GI, the PADF. Also, you're going to face a similar issue again. Cut exposure attack. Yeah. That's why PADF, Cotter Steel, is a no go uh, near the corrosive environment. And then this is a sharing from uh, Thailand uh, to me, uh, one of the uh, power plant projects actually, using the high firm built uh, PADF pin system. Also, same thing. Only after 18 months, it's already badly corroded. You can see all of the sealing happened already. Yeah. And then uh, for us, we do have a lot of case study in Malaysia Climax. Uh, this is actually one of the resort. Uh, it's only from the nine years old, the time I went over this project site. And this is using our polycyclic system on single steel substrate. Upon checking, you can see all the cut edges is still looks good uh, without any problem. Okay, and then get angle again. The edges also okay, okay without any problem. That's why to me, this is a good combination. Please avoid using creative coated steel near the corrosion environment. Of course, besides the cut of uh, steel selection, just like I mentioned environment, right? You also need to be careful uh, when you uh, actually approach the project site. Because in marine condition itself, sometimes we will define the marine as calm marine condition or breaking surface marine condition. Why? Because breaking surface marine condition is actually much more harsher compared to the calm marine condition. Like for industry area, always look out for the four point. Where are they? Okay, let's say hey, you know that this is a four point, then you select a much more durable product. Uh, most of the time, what I observe in the market is that people want to say cost, they just use the bare finishing product uh, for industry related project. To me, using bare finishing product in industry environment project is a high risk. Why? Because without the paint layer presence, you will actually get commercial corrosion failure. Okay, this is our simple guide. Uh, based on the marine influences, so at this time to all of you, if your project site are really close to the marine, example, a uh, little from the coastal area, preferable using the S two hundred or Ultrasil. Yeah, this actually will give you much more durable performances. Or uh, anything more than one kilometer from the seaside, you can use anything already because the corrosion rate is actually quite low. But this one not so worry about uh, the premature corrosion attack. And then also we have one tools uh, recently uh, launched. Uh, early of this uh, month, called uh, Steel Solution uh, so called tools. It's inside our Steel Media uh, website. You can actually go to the website and then click this uh, Steel Studio. Let me show to you how to go to this website. Okay, I click this one. Okay, from here, you go to the website already. So, on this website itself, you just click go to Steel Studio. A studio, then still selection over here. Then you pop up a selection, a so called uh, guide page for you. They will ask a very simple question. For example, they ask you what type of building type you want to actually design, what type of environment, is it corrosive or non corrosive, what calculation you want to select, and the building condition, whether it's a new building, new living job, or extension job, then followed by location. For example, now I, I share with you, maybe I create a commercial building. And then commercial most of the time you all know that it's done corrosive, right? Okay. Then I want to choose uh, maybe a standard gloss finish. Okay. Then followed by maybe new building. Then let's say more than one can. Then you click apply. It will come to show to you the outcome. And then this will be our recommendation. Uh, Calabon uh, still for here, over here. Of course, we also will recommend you other product variants to fit your design intent. And what if I choose here? Let's say one KM from the marine. Then you pop uh, Calabon Ultra Steel. Why? Because AZ200 coating class, more durable, 
compared to the SL D coating class, yeah, or higher last band. So this is how we actually uh, recommend you. Of course, you also can download your outcome or result over here. Just click on download, then you will send back to you a report uh, talking about this uh, selection criteria. Okay. Okay, I go back to my slide now. Okay, last but not least, it's always a do and don'ts. This one to me is very important. Why? Because you can select or choose a record of steel. What if the installer doesn't install it properly? Then things also can go on south. Where? So for us, we actually have a guide for you all to refer to. Example, how to store the bundle or material while on the side. And then what kind of tools you uh, actually need to use it to cut your roofing sheets on the side. Also, using the compatible material like similar flashing type. Please don't go and stick a course like using the GI flashing with a singular main roof. Because GI flashing will actually one first, cool the first. And then also try to avoid copper tape or and rester. Please use the compatible material like aluminum tape. Also ensure that you use the right fastener, as number plus four for those are near the coastal area, or plus three for those four meter and away from coastal area. Yeah. So that's all for my sharing. Now let's go for the Q and A session. Okay, I'll click to the Q and A box. Okay. Okay, uh, for those audiences, uh, you may actually uh, type your question A uh, on the Q&A box. I will try to answer uh, each of them. Uh, okay. I will share the screen now. Okay, I cannot. It's okay. I just read out the question A. First is that a uh, question from Mr. Miss or Miss Lee, looking to learn more corrosion position in C3, C5. What sort of solution are available to us locally in Malaysia? Hassan, can you share the screen? You try to share the screen. Yeah, easier for the audiences to know the question. Okay. Uh, to me, uh, currently in Malaysia itself, we do have a corrosion map yet uh, in Malaysia. So what we can use is only based on our past experiences and data collection that we are currently having. So just now I mentioned the rule of thumb, right? The one kilometer rule is still actually applicable in Malaysia climax. Anything that below one kilometer from coastal area is considered as C3 or C4 category already, or even C5. C5 actually means what? Means something that like 100 meter from coastal area. Uh, it's very, very corrosive. So these are the simple uh, guideline that uh, I can share back to you. Solution means that uh, if you say it's a C5 or next to the C side just now, right? You actually can select our color one ultra steel, the AZ200 with the polyester paint system. These are the best combination, yeah, of color steel for you to select. Okay. Okay, Q2, question number two. Uh, okay. Are you sharing, Sasa? Also, can I share? Huh? It's okay. Question number two is that talking about. Uh, Corrosion due to lightning protection system. My answer is uh, yes, because uh, inside the LPS, uh, LPS being lightning protection system, we do come across a lot of designer want to use a uh, copper tape as part of their LPS design. Unfortunately for us, we know the copper is not uh, 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 compatible with the copper steel material. Uh, that's why it will cause premature failure. So for us, we normally recommend you to use aluminum tape as part of your LPS design. Yeah, because we see a lot already. If you say your site is near the coastal area or maybe industrial area, copper tape itself will cause the steel corrode maybe in year five and also year eight or year ten. Compared to aluminum tape, after twenty old years, no such project like actually will happen because aluminum and copper steel are compatible with each other. Okay, next question would be, uh, for housing project, what need to be done to address noise issue from heavy downpour? Okay, for this question itself, I uh, talk about solution how to treat uh, the noises from your house, right? So this one, of course, is not covered my, in my today talk, but basically what you can do is actually refer back to your uh, roofing system solution provider. Normally, they will advise you to put in some certain form of insulation so that they can cut off all the noises from the rainwater. Yeah. Okay, next question, what is the pie range among the five surface dangers? Uh, I think it's uh, Miss Han Yu Ting. Uh, this one itself, 
of course, uh, let me share the screen again so that people know how to see. Okay, question was asked about this. Okay. I hope you all can see my screen now. Okay. Just now, uh, possible ask me what is the price range, right? Uh, this price range, can you see again the question? Okay, what is the price range among the five survey finish? Okay. Uh, I'm not the salespeople over here, but I can give you some indicative over here. Normally for bare finish product, let's say you talk about X, X uh, uh, ringgit per meter square, for example. For anything that is uh, printed, printed uh, over here, the flip will be more than uh, X already. Means that maybe 10%, 20% higher than not, bare finished product. Yeah. Then among these three, uh, among these finishing itself, depending on the, uh, uh, how the manufacturer want to position themselves. Most of the time, some manufacturer will actually maybe give you one, maybe same rate. They say solid color, the color is the same price. Some will come back to you, yeah, low cost actually cost higher or actually even cost higher. So it's all depending uh, of what, who you're looking for. So to me, uh, please just consult back to your manufacturer to ask them, you know, how much is your price, yeah? Okay, I go back to the question again. Okay. Next question you talk about, any treatment to apply a cut edge or just leave it as easy? Okay, this one to me, it's all depending of the, how you cut the, cut the uh, so-called finish sheet. Just like I mentioned, right? If you, write a, if you use the right cutting tools, most likely you will not need to worry about the cut edge correction attack already because the cut edge itself will self heal by the cutting layer. Unless you use it in proper cutting tools, then yes, you actually need to actually deburr out first or the burr away before you do some treatment, like maybe over paint the edges afterwards. So this is how you do the treatment. So to me, as usual, back to just now, my sharing the do and don'ts, use the right cutting tools to avoid premature cut edge corrosion attack. Okay, how about in highland area, cutting highland or camel highland? Okay, we do supply a lot of material to those uh, highland area, cutting highland, camel highland, using our cutter steel. So far, even though we know that the kind of uh, highland area uh, have a higher humidity, more much than others, our product so far have been using without any problem. Uh, uh, why, I, why I say no problem is because we didn't see any sort of uh, corrosion attack. We never see any sort of uh, uh, color fading observed. But we do see one thing, which I uh, didn't share just now, uh, is a fungus attack. Uh, this one I really cannot help. Uh, we do observe a lot of fungus attack on those uh, highland area or near the maybe uh, forest. This is something that is commonly happened on quarter steel material. Yeah. Okay, next question. May I request for product info? This one, I think uh, our colleague will actually direct you later on go to our website uh, so that you can check our product brochure for more further information. Uh, next question, do you have a standard roofing detailing? Uh, okay, this one also same thing. Uh, we will revert back to you accordingly. Also inside our role former website, they have all detailing for you to choose. Next question is that, what kind of protection is needed for exposed of ages? Uh, this one just answer already. Using the proper cutting tool should avoid all the so-called failure mode. Next question is that, is if the coating scratched during the transformation, okay, how to repair? Okay, this is a good question. Uh, I didn't share the slide over here. The rule of thumb that normally I use is a two mm rules. Means that once you see the scratch line, right? If the scratch line itself is not that serious, not so uh, actually uh, so-called uh, deep, just leave it alone. Uh, it wouldn't cause any uh, premature failure. Maybe I share the screen over here so that you can illustrate. Here. Okay, this one. Uh, this slide actually I didn't share this now because I, I already know enough time. So this one we talk about. You can see this one. Yeah. This is quite common in the market. So to me, normally if let's say your substrate or cutting layer is already damaged, after one week you go back again. They said not rusting, no rusting happened, means the coating is still okay. Eh? 
But after one week, you go back again, rust already coming, means that it's already damaged to the coating layer. Then you need to actually do two things only. First option, either you replace it, or either you do a touch up over there. Most of the time, I don't recommend you to touch up. Because when you do touch up, after a few months, your developer or client will come after you. How come my roof color is uneven? As something like this one. So it's something that we need to avoid. Yeah. This one to me, uh, if I say the scratch is very deep, more than 200mm width, please replace with a new roofing sheets. Yeah. Okay, I go back to question A. Okay. Next one, uh, pin point D, industry area. Okay. Okay. Come to industry area, right? I think important point for us to consider is always back to the client activity. Uh, today, actually, I didn't share a lot of uh, internal quotient activity because every industry uh, internet activity are different from one to another. It's very hard for me to cover within one hour talk. So to me, normally what I recommend is that if you do have time for certain inquiry, your client, uh, they have their internal manufacturing processes, don't worry, send your inquiry back to Bluescope. We will send our engineer to come up, come to talk to you to understand your requirement. Then we will recommend the right material for you to select. Uh, copper tape also, I mentioned already, copper tape is not compatible to copper steel. Please use uh, aluminum tape only. Okay. Okay, I'll do, uh... Surveyor, Mr. NSP, could you type in a uh, which slide? Yeah. So that I can refer back to the slide just now. After 20 years, but the roof been to do case study. Hmm, let me open up. Been to look. In two case study. Oh, you mean number three, right? I think this will be number three. Let me go back. Yeah, I'll share the screen again. You said pin to lose would be this one, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's the question again? Okay. Oh, is it PBGL? Okay, this one, okay, because to me, uh, I don't have the information, this one I also cannot tell, but based on what we've seen so far, uh, for PBGI material itself, most of the time, the lifespan is between 15 years to 20 years. In year 15, you will see the start to see the premature failure already. So this one, for example, right? Oh, oh. Okay, let me full screen first. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay, this one. Okay. So the okay. will be the uh, using the uh, GI substrate mostly. We do GI substrate, yeah. I don't think it will be PBGL. PBGL will happen only let's say it's a very low coating class material. Yeah? Just now earlier on slide example, uh maybe I go up again, eh? Okay, I think you can see my screen now. This one. Mm. Just now earlier on, I share this case study right of this one. Actually, uh, this one actually is PBGL. Why is PBGL? Because uh, when we flip over uh, the roofing sheet, we found a brand index. The brand index actually mentioned PBGL. This one actually is confirmed PBGL because they mentioned PBGL. And then this is only after five years old, yeah. this, this exposure. Uh, but after five years old, it's still okay. So I believe that this PBGL most likely will be using a very low coating, uh, so called uh, a mass. Maybe as that 50 gram or maybe as 30 gram. Because we do have sample uh, uh, being collected back for us to do check in. That's why I cannot uh, 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 comment or confirm what are coating class. But for me to have a five years protection attack, most of the time, the coating class should be very, very low. Should be about 30 gram or 20 gram. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let me see any more questions. Okay. I think, I think that's all. Uh, I think I answered most of the question already. Okay. Uh, next will be, I think for those, uh, uh, land members, 
uh, also uh, BA members, uh, please stay tuned because uh, I think we have one screen for you to actually uh, sign up. You can actually scan the QR code so that you can actually uh, get your CBD point uh, upon actually uh, logging uh, this uh, so-called uh, QR code. So that's all uh, for uh, today's sharing. I uh, hope to actually catch up again with all of you. Okay, enjoy. Thank you.